What is up, everybody? Welcome into episode 34 of the Brahma Bullpen, coming to you on behalf of the United Football Media Group from the Cow Pasture. Um, man, we got game preview. We got St. Louis Battlehawks coming down to San Antonio to play in the Dome. Going to be an epic game. Get your tickets, man. We need all the help we could get in the Dome. Please get your tickets. Uh, we gave away two tickets. Uh, to this game, I know there's going to be at least two uh, future Brahma fans inside the stands. And don't forget to go back to our other episode and make a comment so that you can win those tickets. That'd be episode 32. Go back to episode 32. Comment on the video if you want tickets to the uh, Arlington game. We'll go over that here. And then I got a little graphic so you have the dates. Uh, but today we're going to do preview. We got a game graphic. We got a stats page we're going to talk about. And then we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to pick one key defensive matchup and one key offensive matchup that we're going to talk about that I think we could might have some impact on the outcome of the game. I got to be more careful with what I say on these videos uh, because when you misspeak on YouTube, there's definitely people going to call you out on it. So uh, I'm going to try to just keep it to two players with some stats. All the stats are coming off of the UFL.com or PFF.com. And I'm going to try not to exaggerate the number of football games I've watched in my life ever again. I'm sorry. Okay. Tens of thousands. Moving on. All right. So like I said, we got the giveaway. Here's the graphic. May 19th. Uh, go comment on episode 32. Chance to win tickets. Uh, but here's our preview graphic. Go ahead and throw that up, uh, producer. The graphic with the uh, St. Louis Battlehawks coming to the Dome. Sunday, April 14th, 3 p.m. It's going to be on ABC for all you Battlehawk fans not going to make it down to San Antonio. And I am going to say Battlehawks. I am not going to uh, uh, talk any trash uh, about the Battlehawks because I had some Battlehawk fans come to my defense uh, on Twitter this week on the X uh, for simply stating that someone posted from St. Louis about, uh, you know, minor league, Team. And I'm like, this is not a minor league team. This is a pro spring football league. It's not minor league to nobody. And I got cussed at for that. And I was like, just show me the league they're minor to. You know, we don't have an affiliation with uh, the NFL. Uh, we don't have, it's not like we're a minor league baseball team for major league or we're the NBA's D league. This is a professional spring football league. And all these men out on this field are pro football athletes, pro spring football athletes. So, anyways, we'll see you in the dome. Let's go over some stats. Enough of that rant right there. So, here we got season stats. Like I said, everything's either off of the PFF.com's website or off of the UFL.com stat page. Uh, so, overall PFF score for the Brahmas is 72.5. Uh, the overall score for the Battlehawks is 72.9. So, very, very comparable after two games. Uh, points scored 49 for the Brahmas. Points allowed 31. Points scored for the Battlehawks, 45 versus 46. So that's why they have one loss, right? They've given up one more point than they've scored. Uh, big metric that's going to be critical in this game is the quarterback completion percentage metric for the season. Or after two games of play, uh, Chase Garber's completion percentage is still 73.8%, while A.J. McCarron's is at 65%, so we got a little edge there. Uh, passing yards, 443 the 433, so very close there. Uh, rushing yards, you can see 116 yards, 3.3 yards per attempt. That's for the team uh, in general. That's not just uh, McFarland, our starting running back. Uh, we want the team stats there. And then St. Louis, 172 yards, 4.5 yards uh, per rush. So uh, definitely got us a, a little edge there. So we probably got a little bit of edge on the passing. They have a little edge on the rushing right there. Um, Defense, our overall PFF score uh, with all of those metrics they put in there, this includes pass defense, uh, running defense, pass breakup, completion percentage allowed, all that stuff. We got our overall score of 73.7 compared to the Battlehawks, 71.6. Little edge there going to the Brahma. So uh, you can see that this is going to be a closely uh, matched game. I think the point score that we're going to predict later is going to uh, – Coincide with that, I don't think this is going to be a blowout at all. At all. This is going to probably be the game of the week. Uh, prime, you know, prime kickoff spot on 
Sunday here in the Dome at 3 o'clock. So uh, go out there and get your tickets. There's no excuse this weekend at Easter, man. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, points allowed versus sacks. Uh, of course, you see that there. That's just a little defensive metric. Uh, we, we've got seven sacks. they got four. Uh, then another other thing, uh, I typed that backwards, so I apologize for that. Uh, they've had seven red zone attempts, and they've completed five of them for St. Louis, and the Brahmas are five for five. So they got seven out of – they've scored five out of seven. Probably should have flipped that the other way. Sorry about that. That's on me. Uh, but you can see how the Brahmas' offense has been extremely formidable inside the red zone. Also, our defense has been great inside of the red zone as well. Uh, St. St. Louis, maybe we got a little bit edge there. So kind of looking like the stats are leading towards the Brahmas a little bit. The St. Louis stats are definitely no slouch. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to look into what we would consider some critical matchups, some players on the offense and some players on defense that are going to impact the game. We just kind of talk about their metrics a little bit. So let's start off with the wide receivers. Pop up the superhero wide receiver wide receiver graphic. So who has the better stats? So I basically took their best wide receiver highest stats, and I took the Brahma's best wide receiver highest stats. Uh, so we got Martellus Atman over there on the uh, Battle Hawk side. He had a huge game too. These stats are for the season, so if you see the stats are kind of off or whatever. These are season totals for these guys. So here's a crazy stat, right? Uh, his overall rating on PFF is 78.4, which is extremely high. But look at his targets to reception number. He's been targeted 13 times. He's caught 10 of those. That's one of those metrics that you just mean. It just shows that he's got good hands. Uh, his receiving percentage is 76.9%. Almost 80% of the balls coming to him are getting caught. He's got three touchdowns and zero fumbles. Crazy stats. Uh, but we got Jonte Kirkland on our side, who's also got really, really good stats. Uh, his overall rating on PFF is 66.5. I will tell you, what's knocking him is the fumble that he had uh, against D.C. He's got two touchdowns and one fumble. That's probably why his overall PFF rating is a little bit lower than Antman, uh, but still very solid. He's been targeted 18 times with 15 receptions. That means he's catching the ball whopping 83.3% of the time. 83% of the time the ball is in his area. In his area, This man is snagging it, right? Then yards after catch, all the stuff that he's been doing. We've seen the highlights, all these touchdown pads, you know, touchdown each game. So he's very consistent and uh, leading our team in uh, reception. So I don't know who's got the edge here. I think that uh, both teams have solid wide receivers. Uh, and these are not just the only wide receivers. We just picked the ones with the best stats, right? You got Shepard on the other side, and we got Justin Smith and Stevenson on our side. Uh, our tight ends are definitely better. I think we definitely have an edge on tight ends. So we didn't want to throw tight ends in here so people couldn't accuse me of padding the stats to make the, the Brahmas team look better. Took their best wide out, our best one. So now we talked about their best players on offense and defense. I mean, on offense. Let's talk about the best players on defense. So here we got linebackers. Love linebackers. Uh, I, I don't think I can be accused of cherry picking because their linebacker, actually, uh, Mike Rose, has really amazing stats. So uh, Mike Rose overall PFF score is 94.3. His rush, rush defense score on PFF is 91. His pass defense on EFF is 91.6. He's got four total tackles, and you might think to yourself, that's not a lot of tackles. Well, understand, this is only one game. He did not play week one, but week two, he definitely made an impact. Uh, and I look for him to continue that trend when he comes down here to San Antonio. Uh, you, don't, you don't just luck into having the, an overall rate of 94.3, right? He, he put in some work. Uh, week one, I mean, excuse me, week two when he got on the field. But that don't mean we got, we're not no slouches on our linebackers either. I didn't put in Jordan Williams in here because uh, we all know he's probably top two or three linebackers in the league. Uh, but, you know, we have Devontae Beckett. So Devontae Beckett overall PFF score is actually the highest PFF score for our linebackers on the team right now, 83.5. His rush defense is a 90.8, so 
really equivalent to Mike Rose. His pass defense is 80.7, not quite as high as uh, Mike's is, but you know that's also because he's got two games in, and all it takes is for you to give up one big play or, or miss a tackle on a reception, and it'll really knock that pass defense score down. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that the odd or the stats don't always uh, compare exactly. But uh, total tackles for Beckett, he's our uh, is 11. He's one of the top tacklers on our team. Uh, the Brahma's defense is rated number two overall uh, in the league right now. So we definitely got a stout, stout, stout defense. Um, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. It's it's going to come down to uh, crunch time. I think that uh, whoever executes towards the end of the game is going to wind up winning the game. I think it's going to be a one-score game. Uh, let's go down and throw up our – let's get to it. Let's go ahead and throw up our score prediction graphic. So I'm thinking the Brahmas are going to drop 26 on the, the Battle Hawks, and I think we're only going to give up 22. You know, the 30 and 20 number, uh, 30 points for offense, 20 points on defense is kind of, you know, what I've been hoping for all season. Uh, I don't think we're going to get there. I think St. Louis's defense is a little too good. Uh, but I definitely think we're going to be right around 26. We scored 27 points week one and 20 points week two. And I definitely think that uh, the defense that St. Louis is bringing to the Dome is equivalent to Memphis and to D.C. I think uh, we're going to get a little bit better execution. I don't think we're going to start off slow like we did in Memphis. I think we're going to come out hot like we did in week one and give us a chance to get to 26 points. Uh, St. Louis Battlehawks, they got a pretty good offense. A.J. McCarron is no slouch. And like I said, their wide receivers are – Basically an all-star team here. Uh, but, you know, uh, Brahmas uh, have given up the least amount of points in the league, right? So we gave up 12 points and 19 points uh, this year. So no one's given up less points than we have. Uh, number one points defense so far this year. This year. And I think that trend is going to continue. I think the uh, Brahmas are going to get a key stop probably in the third or fourth quarter. And I think our offense is going to be able to take advantage of that and get us that uh, four-point victory in the Alamo Dome. Real quick, while we were recording this episode of the Brahma Bullpen, uh, the UFL PR released that, unfortunately, Alex Millette, as well as Destroying, have been put on the injured reserve list, which means they're going to be out for an extended period of time. We wish those guys a speedy recovery. Also, the Brahmas cut wide receiver T.J. Vasher. So be on the lookout for who the Brahmas pick up uh, off of other teams of the waiver wire to replace. Now we have room for a wideout, an old lineman, and also a kicker. Who knows, maybe uh, Amadola will be back. We'll see what happens. But uh, speedy recovery, you guys. Sorry that uh, you got injured. You put your bodies on the line out there for us, and we appreciate that. Much appreciation from the bullpen. We're going to go ahead and cut the episode here. We don't want to ramble. Uh, look for us to be at the game. We're going to be tailgating. Come and find us. We're going to be in the same spot we were last week, uh, right by the staircase, entering the south end of the Alamo Dome. We'll be there with the other podcast groups, along with uh, SA Gunslingers and Texas Talk of Football and the Hornsport Podcast. We'll all be kind of down there hanging out together. And uh, show up to the Dome. Let's be loud. St. Louis had 40,000. All right, let's get the dome close to that. I mean, am I asking too much? Maybe. I'll be honest with you. I'll be happy if we make a slight increase over week one and get into that 15, 16,000 mark uh, for week three. I mean, we're 2 0. What else do the Brahmas need to do besides kick everybody's butt like we have been? With that, let's end it with a horns forward. Let's go, Brahmas, baby. <laughs>